तो पेन ड्राइव वगैरह कुछ होगा लिंक ये कौन सा एकदम लास्ट एकदम लास्ट चले जाइए एकदम लास्ट नहीं मैं सर आपको लिंक दे देता हूँ वापस में आपका नंबर क्या होगा सर कुछ एट डबल फोर सेवन थ्री वन टू डबल एट थ्री आज भी ये है सर आप इसको ये आप स्टार्ट कीजिए सर मैं आपको लिंक भेज देता हूँ इसे कर जी अब स्ट्रीमिंग हो रहा है यस सर स्टार्ट कर दीजिए हाँ ठीक है मेरे लिंक लिंक भेज देता हूँ तो दो भेजा सेम है क्या दोनों? हाँ सर सेम ही है सर वो पहले वाला मेरे को थोड़ा वैसा दिखाना है तो फोन में एक ही है सर कि मैंने ये सेकंड वाला भेजा सर दोनों ही सेम है कोई भी भेज दो सर ठीक है ठीक है हाँ अभी स्टूडेंट आए नहीं अभी ना स्टूडेंट मुझे यहाँ से पता चलेगा ना एक बार हाय वालों आ जाएगा अभी Okay, we have for more five minutes, then we'll start. Okay, good morning, student. We'll start in five minutes. Okay.
Uh, is I'm audible? Just uh, let me know whether I'm audible or not. Then I'll start. Please let me know I'm audible or not. Okay, I got your response. So, okay, let's start today's class. So, today's class on metabolism of calcium and phosphate and uh, the regulation of uh, calcium and phosphate. Both will discuss. So, th this class is a little bit of, uh, it will take time. It's a big class, so just be patient. So let's see the sources of calcium, uh, what are the sources of calcium and what is the function uh, where it's required. So <coughs> we, as we know, we all know that uh, we can get calcium from, this is milk, we can get from milk, we can get from any milk product like uh, paneer and something else and uh, green vegetables like broccoli, uh, spinach and all this we can get calcium from there and the non-vegetarian source is a seafood we can get a calcium from seafood also so here you can see the function of the calcium what are the uh, where where the calcium is involved last class we have discussed right uh, calcium is uh, uh, is act act as a, sec a second messenger right so that is the one of the function of the calcium the other is it's help in uh, muscle contraction how how it helps it bind to the um, uh, to the tropomyosin and it act for actin and myosin so for the muscle contraction the third thing is it helps in the uh, nerve induction for example you need take it required calcium for the release of any uh, exocytosis the calcium is required so for to carrying the information this calcium is very um, you know very important it plays a very important role and uh, obviously if in the cardiac action potential where it uh, when, when the depolarization state the level of calcium get decreased okay the other ring thing to release of your uh, release of insulin when the ins uh, for the release of insulin we need a calcium also. how when this is the mechanism i expect you all know you, you must read in your uh, metabolism classes let's see once again when the level of ins glucose is high in your body uh, how much high it should be more than 180 okay then the this is uh, blood 2 receptor will be activated this is due to uh, there is two enzyme hexokinase and glucokinase this is due to by glucokinase enzyme so this glucose it is taken up by the cell it will go into process release ATP and uh, ATP potassium dependent channel will be closed so the in it will get a when the potassium will be in the cell so it will get a depolarized right so due to this the calcium channel open when the calcium channel open, the calcium will uh, enter into the cell in the cytoplasm, and it will initiate the release of the vesicle or uh, the release of vesicle of the insulin. And due to the exocytes process, the insulin will be released. Okay, so this is how the mechanism is. Let's see in detail about the calcium. So calcium in the, this is how is distributed in our human body. So 99% of the calcium is in the skeleton in your bones so the deposition of the calcium the storage of the calcium is in the 99 percent in the bones whereas you can see phosphate how much 85 percent similarly in the soft tissue it has a one percent whereas 15 percent is the phosphate extracellular fluid 0.2 percent and 0.1 percent 
and if you take the total in grams uh, so if you take a thousand grams so in the distribution will be like that okay so how is calcium is uh, uh, is deposited in the bone so it is deposited as in the form of calcium process appetite okay so uh, it said see uh, this is the calcium phosphate hydroxide so it is in the form of uh, it is a storage form of calcium and phosphate in the bone so what is the role it's in the bones it do it helps in the blood coagulation because uh, it um, it required for the coagulation uh, membrane permeability nerve impulse we discussed just now muscle contractility discussed just now enzyme activation so there is certain enzymes it required calcium as a cofactor example succina dehydrogenase so when the calcium if the level of calcium is low so at that time the enzyme activity will be decreased or sometime it will be like zero so you know the electrolyte this calcium phosphate or sodium potassium they plays a very important role in our body whereas phosphate was a ro role of phosphorus in the bone is a storage form tooth also storage form atp for the energy production energy production is a required this is a phosphate it is required for that phosphorylation of many carbohydrate you know when any carbohydrate get phosphorylate so their action will be depend upon that uh, that some is active in the phosphorylated state some is activity in the dephosphorylated state so it will depend the activity so what is it it phosphorylate many carbohydrate it requires in the dna rna synthesis yes we uh, learn this in the molecular biology and phospholipids are you know important components of the cell membrane and importantly most importantly the buffer so the buffer is phosphorus buffer is a very important buffer so you must know this daily requirement uh, it will depend on um, the main source is uh, milk as a food and uh, where it get absorbed calcium calcium is absorbed from the duodenum by which hormone it is absorbed by the activity of vitamin d3 from the uh, Uh, you know uh, duodenum which part of duodenum it uh, the first and the second part of duodenum uh, means d1 and d2 mostly from the d1 and d2 it is absorbed from there okay only 30% of the calcium absorbed from the food and rest of that is excretion uh, goes for the excretion from the intestine to the kidney whereas in phosphorus how much uh, is the daily requirement is 1.5 grams uh um, source is almost all food we can get from the all food uh, there is no extra genius deficit because it's uh, it, it, you will get uh, you know phosphorus from every food so there is uh, nothing like you you have defici deficiency for the phosphorus so uh, it get absorbed again from the intestine it can absorb and reabsorb from the kidney and the sources you know phosphorus uh, only 70% from the food okay the absorption of phosphorus of the food absorb 100% for the fish is absorbed 100% so how is distributed uh, uh, you know uh, total body calcium uh, you know in the one is the bony but 99% is uh, stored in bone and 1% is a non bone rather than apart from the bone is a 1% in bone also we have a 99% in 99% 99% is the crystalline form and the other one is bone fluid uh, one in 1% it will come extracellular fluid blood stream interstitial and intracellular in the cell so what is the physiological function i guess uh, we i just give a little bit hint of what is the physiological function of the calcium metabolism the first thing is blood co coagulation it required for coagulation the muscle contraction already studied uh, helping actin myosin it required calcium there is a uh, 
cal calmodin uh, receptors are there it will attach to uh, there and require for um, for muscle contraction neuromuscular transmission is also for the exocytosis process it required for that and skeletal growth and mineralization so calcium in our serum is uh, regulated very narrow limits for example calcium is 9.0 to 10.5 mg per deciliter and less than 50% of ionized uh, and major t of the rest is a bond with uh, albumin ionized calcium is a physiological important i'll discuss this point in the next slide so uh, have you remembered on the last class i have uh, on the first uh, class what i have took uh, liver function test in that i have told you that uh, uh, about the protein right so, uh, about the protein uh, the role of albumin when there is a decrease of protein what will happen it and what will happen when there is increase of protein right so uh, calcium is in a form of three f uh, is, is a two in appears in a two form if one is the bounded form bounded form that means with albumin non bounded form that is called uh, ionized form ionized form is the active form so it is you see the ionized calcium is a physiological important so i told at that time if there is a decrease of albumin so we will find the low level of calcium so every low level of calcium should be correlate with the level of albumin or level of total protein okay so what are the uh, how calcium is metabolism and regulated uh, this is what we have studied regarding calcium this is all a basic the only important is the this slide you know that means the regulation and and the exam point of view this is a very important question if the question comes from this topic this is the hard area this is the main area it will definitely some question will be formed from this area so the regulation of the calcium metabolism is it gets very important so how it's regulated it is regulated by three hormone ma mainly uh the the first hormone pth the parathyroid hormone the second is vitamin d vitamin d has a uh, you know two forms uh, generally it's three forms the active form is uh, calcitriol which is 125 dihydroxy vitamin d3 vitamin d and the calcitonin is released from thyroid gland so let's see the we'll discuss this function in the later uh, slide let's see how it's absorbed from uh, gi so gi absorption calcium so every one gram intake uh, if you take an average of one gram intake only 10 to 20 percent is net absorbed okay so if you take a hundred for example so 10 to 20 will be absorbed and this absorption is actively vitamin d dependent it is actively processed which is a vitamin d dependent that means the the absorption uh, vitamin d3 will be helping in the absorption of uh, calcium so if you have a less number of vitamin d3 so absorption is absorption will be decreased so for the to maintain the homeostasis of calcium we must require vitamin d3 for for absorption of calcium from the gi tract from where exactly from the di tract is the duodenum okay the next thing renal excretion of calcium so 99 3 99 of of the calcium is filtered from the glomerulus and it's reabsorbed to 99 percent uh, reabsorbed from the uh, PCT so PCT proximate convoluted tubules it, it get re the calcium get reabsorbed uh, from there so this is also a, a you know uh, uh, calcium dependent uh, uh, vitamin D3 dependent process for absorption of 
calcium from the PCT and uh, reabsorption occur in the proximal tubule linked to the sodium reabsorption it's, it's required sodium and it's linked with the sodium and also it get uh, reabsorbed from DS DCT by the help of PT PTH dependent so uh, renal excretion of calcium uh, this uh, um, it is uh, for the absorption uh, reabsorption of calcium it requires vitamin D3 and PTH vitamin D3 will be required from a reabsorption it will do the reabsorption from PCT and parathyroid hormone will reabsorb from DCT okay the both had difference so let's see how uh, it w this is a pool of uh, calcium and uh, how it will uh, do action so in the dietary intake of the 50 for example it's so uh, 50 uh, 1500 uh, 1500 mg per deciliter uh, the in intestine it, it will it will come in intestine from the food the dietary intake and get reabsorbed so this reabsorb is directed by vitamin D okay vitamin D and uh, is we get a calcium here now this calcium is reabsorbed it come to the serum it will go to the kidney and then kidney to the urine okay and from the serum some of the calcium is taken up from the serum to the bone for the bone formation and which hormone helps in that this is the calcitonin so calcitonin will ideally it helps in the bone in the bone formation but it get it decrease the plasma concentration of the calcium okay how it take up calcium from the plasma uh, and helps in the bone formation take a, uh, take uh, it take the calcium from the plasma and deliver to the bone it is a function and how, what pth do pth will reabsorb that means it will uh, it will eat bone and re get release calcium and phosphorus from the bone and from the bone to the plasma what are the hormone this do resorption function this is pth and vitamin d3 okay so now from the kidney it get go it it will goes to the urine but this uh, you know passage is inhibited inhibited by or you can say reabsorption is inhibited uh, or excretion is inhibited or you can say uh, reabsorption occurs by pth calcitonin and vitamin d3 both three hormone this three hormone will reabsorb your calcium from the urine okay or you can say inhibit the excretion I hope you understood. Uh, should I repeat it again, or it's okay? Okay, let's. I'm repeating. This is a very important pool, so I will repeat it again. So the uh, first dietary intake of the calcium, it will come to the intestine. From the intestine, it is, uh, you know, absorbed. Uh, the calcium is absorbed by the vitamin D. Then the from the plasma, from the plasma, the calcium is taken up by the calcitonin and deliver to the bone and from the bone it will reabsorb and deliver to the again to the plasma by the hormone pth and vitamin d3 and from the plasma it will go to the kidney from the kidney to the urine this kidney to the urine is inhibited or you can say reabsorbed by pth calcitonin and vitamin d3 understood i hope you understood okay so uh, this is the same thing what you have uh, told okay now this is about uh, uh, total calcium okay this is all about total calcium oh okay it's the total calcium i already told calcium is in the two form mainly this is a bonded form which is pl plasma protein it is bonded mostly it is albumin 
and the other is non bonded protein is uh, the free free calcium or ionized calcium so 50% is bonded uh, bonded with calcium uh, bonded with proteins and 50% is free uh, ionized means it is not bonded with anything in 50% in a bonded uh, okay so say some some are bonded with the plasma protein mainly by the calcium or some are bonded with uh, some iron an iron okay so uh, you must remember if is this part is you don't remember it's okay the thing is you have to un understood uh, the calcium in our body is formed uh, generally is in two form bonded and un unbonded or free form so bonded is with albumin a total you can say plasma protein and unbonded is a free form that and the free form is the physiologically active form okay so how you do uh, um, as uh, how do you estimate the free form of the calcium by what is the principle photometry okay you do electrolyte test you know potentium uh, you, uh, the principle uh, potentiometry and by photometry also you can do so potentiometry uh, the these are the some machines are there ecl uh, the machines are there avl the machines are there they, they do the for the the test estimate calcium free or ionized calcium okay so uh, let's see a little bit of a phosphor then we'll come to again to the again uh, to the regulation part and uh, hyper and hypo calcium and phosphorus so let's see the phosphate in the form of organic and inorganic organic may uh, it's present in nucleic acid uh, phospholipid phosphoprotein and for the high energy comp component this i guess you understood because uh, is mainly required for the energy for the atp it requires the uh, phosphate and for the nucleic acid also in an inorganic form this is a hydroxyapatite crystal in, it is present in the form of that and the serum acid uh, as a in in the ionized form and the fraction is measured by routine biochemical analysis so i told you the machine which is uh, by the potentiometry it is uh, analyzed we wanted to analyze the free form of the phosphate or calcium you have to do by calcium uh, sorry uh, by the potentiometry in serum or in organic phosphate is uh, distributed as 55% uh, the free form 10% bonded form and 35% is a complex form okay let's see the calcium metabolism uh, vitamin d you know it provide calcium and spread to the extracellular food for, for bone mineralization okay so uh, it's it's uh, for the mineralization the vitamin d is very important and uh, this is the hormone it will provide calcium and phosphorus to the extracellular fluid otherwise the uh, you know the the level of the this electrolyte is it, it's fall into very a uh, narrow band so uh, if it is uh, little bit the level of this electrolyte get deranged you will land up with the clinical symptoms okay so uh, deficiency in the children do calcium we can see uh, uh, you, you must know the rickets and uh, in adults is osteomalacia and uh, sometime what happen uh, uh, i'll come to the this uh, how this calcium vitamin d3 is formed so uh, i'll explain the third point how it's formed what happen in our skin over in skin in our skin we have a dehydro uh, cholesterol so this is a form of cholesterol which is present in the layers of skin 
when the uv rays get to hit by uh, this the uh, hydroxy cholesterol is hit by the uv rays so it's form uh, calci cholecalciferol which is a 25 uh, d hydroxy uh, vitamin d so uh, this how this uh, vitamin d is formed now this vitamin d now this vitamin d will come up it will go to the liver and the, in the liver this is converted into 125 dehydroxy vitamin d3 okay uh, so, uh, sorry it, it will go to the liver and in liver from the liver it passes to the kidney and it will form 125 dehydroxy, uh, dehydroxy vitamin d3 by the enzyme 1 alpha hydroxylase so this is the important part so in the liver it gets converted to 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol in liver and 125 hydroxy cholecalciferol is kidney it is called calcidiol and this is called calcitriol so mechanism uh, how it enters like a steroid so steroids so enter nucleus and bind the receptor that leads to the uh, exposed part of DNA okay so when <coughs> it uh, binds to the DNA if uh, there is a transcription occur and mRNA will be released this mRNA will, uh, mRNA will bind to the cell binding D protein in epithelium and intestine kidney that do the action <coughs> this is how the mechanism so this picture I was trying to explain in the skin vitamin D3 uh, and from the diet you also get a vitamin D vitamin D how you get by the UV rays this will convert uh, 7 dehydrocholesterol into de uh, into a vitamin D uh, 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol then it will go to the liver this is called 25 hydroxy vitamin D and from the liver it will go to the kidney which is converted <coughs> So uh, what is the action? So it's increase calcium what is uh, absorption from the intestine. We will discuss. It will <coughs> increase the calcium absorption from the intestine from D1 and D2. It increase phosphate absorption from the intestine. Uh, okay. And uh, mostly not from the D1 and D2, it's from the D3 and D4. So, increase renal reabsorption of calcium and phosphorus from the PCT. Increase bone resorption from the old bone and mineralize new bone. Metal, that means net resorption. Overall effect, if you see, the increase the serum calcium and phosphorus. The level of the serum of cal uh, serum calcium and phosphorus it will increase would if they are overall function is that. so this is the same picture um, let's see how it's get uh, activated so so you, you know when there is a decrease of plasma calcium the low level of plasma calcium is there so it will get give signal to the parathyroid gland to release the pth parathyroid hormone now this hormone will release and go to the kidney and kidney it will convert 25 dehydroxy uh, vitamin d into 125 dehydroxy vitamin d3 so how it convert it how this occur by enzyme 1 alpha hydroxylase so 1 alpha hydroxylase this is activated by PTH hormone so it is not directly uh, PTH hormones not directly reabsorbed uh, calcium but it activate or it uh, it it get active uh, it activate the one uh, one alpha hydroxylase activity and this one alpha hydroxy uh, hydroxylase will convert 25 hydroxy vitamin D into 125 hydroxy vitamin D3 okay so now you have a increased number of vitamin D 
production because of this and also when the decreased plasma level of uh, phosphate will be there the same thing will be happen okay so now we have a vitamin d3 production increased level of vitamin d3 and what is the function of vitamin d3 in the bone what it will do it will resolve increased calcium phosphorus what will it will do in kidney it will do the calcium decrease the calcium excretion because it reabsorb from the uh, pct and in kid in uh, uh, in whatever the uh, uh, phosphorus it will also re uh, uh, decrease the excretion and increase the reabsorption intestine it will re increase the absorption of calcium and phosphorus overall effect increase plasma calcium so this is the regulation part calcium um, if the important point i just forgot to tell you the calcitriol calcitriol is 125 hydroxy uh, hydroxy vitamin d so this is itself it give when the level of this calcitriol is increase in the plasma it will give a negative feedback to the pth okay so uh, this will inhibit the secretion of the pth from the parathyroid hormone the same thing will when the level of calcium will be increase and the when the level of the phosphorus will increase this will directly inhibit this two hormone vitamin d3 negatively inhibit uh, pth as well as 25 hydroxy the level of 25 hydroxy vitamin d also will be less and when the level of pth is high vitamin d will be high because the activity will be more so major hormone in the regulation of the calcium uh, pt is a major hormone synthesis and secreted from the chief cell of the parathyroid gland and what is the mechanism is the you know pt is a polypeptide if it is a polypeptide what it does it goes to the cell from the cell it enter to the cytoplasm and there is a you know specific receptor uh, not not directly enter to the cytoplasm it has a receptor on to the cell membrane and it has a receptor there is called g protein coupled receptor it bind to that it bind to that g coupled protein uh, coupled receptor and when it bind to that it initiate the effector cells this effector cell activate the activity of adenine cyclase which convert atp into cyclic amp that leads the the physiological action of the hormone the cyclic amp act as a you know uh, transcription factor and rest all the downstream process will occur so this is a gland parathyroid gland how this is a four gland um this is how it is located you know and uh, this is released from the chief cell uh this is called oxophilic cell and this is red blood cell this is the capillaries are there so this pth is released from the chief chief cell so it has a uh, action in already we have uh, discussing many time the increased bone resorption what is the pth hormone action increase the bone resorption as the vitamin d is also do the same function increase bone resorption in bone resorption will uh, will what will happen then it will increase the calcium and phosphorus in the serum what will have the next thing renal calcium reabsorption from the pct sorry from the dct because it is pth uh, vitamin d3 will be in the P pct increase calcium absorption of the intestine indirectly not directly function it cause indirectly how it indirectly because pth get uh, it activate one hydrox one alpha hydroxylase which 
in turn increase the level of vitamin D3. Now this vitamin D3 will be increase the reabsorption of calcium. So PTH doesn't have a direct relation of absorption from the intestine. It has an indirect relation. Okay, and decrease the phosphate reabsorption from the PCT. We already discussed. And oral effect increase the serum calcium and decrease phosphate. So I guess uh, this is we learn many time we study this just very quickly. If when the plasma level of the calcium is decreased, the PTH hormone will increase and the bone from the bone reabsorption of calcium and phosphorus, the plasma calcium will be higher. From the kidney, again the increase uh, excretion and decrease calcium excretion. Uh, and uh, increase the vitamin D production. So uh, it has in kidney PTH will um, reabsorb calcium but it excrete phosphorus. The difference is that it will reabsorb calcium but excrete phosphorus. This is the this difference you must remember. It will not reabsorb phosphorus salts uh, from the kidney. It will increase excre excretion of the phosphorus. So calcium metabolism by the PTH hormone. Uh, calcium sends a protein that increases PTH, and the calcium level is decreased, and the decrease PTH when uh, calcium level is increased. So it. Uh, both are uh, uh, you know when the level of the calcium is increased so it give a negative feedback for release of or for the synthesis of PTH. PTH also increase vitamin D3 level by activation 1 alpha hydroxylase we study. Increase phosphorus leads to the increased PTH okay uh, by decreasing the calcium level. Uh, uh, this thing is quite confusing but you have to just by heart that this and magnesium decrease leads to the decrease of pth level so the, again the same thing when the decreased calcium is there uh, all this process it will get increased calcium and increase uh, how it increase the same uh, already we discussed so now come to the hormone by calcitonin so as we discussed three hormone uh, so the total is three hormone one is PTH PTH we have discussed vitamin D3 we have discussed and the uh, the second thing is calcitonin so uh, the, the third thing is calcitonin so just quickly revise vitamin uh, PTH and vitamin D3. So PTH will do all PTH and vitamin D3 are similar. Only in the phosphorus is quite dif is is different. The what for phos uh, PTH will do? It will absorb. So it from the kidney it will reabsorb calcium, but it will uh, it will excrete phosphorus. The difference is that. Uh, okay, and in intestine PTH it has no, no uh, indirect relation that means it increase the activity of vitamin D uh, activity of one hydra uh, one alpha hydroxylase which in turn increase the activity of vitamin D3 and vitamin D3 will be uh, do the function of reabsorb from absorption of calcium from the intestine okay so let's see the calcitonin it's a very little function the function is opposite to the PTH okay when if you forgot then just see what is the function of PTH plasma level of calcium and phosphorus okay it the calcitonin will do the reverse of that let's see how it did it take a calcium from the plasma and it deliver to the bone okay okay let's see so calcium, uh, calcitonin, it synthesized and secreted from the parafollicular cells of the thyroid. Okay, okay. 
uh, where the uh, T3 and T4 is secreted from the which cell? From the follicular cell. And calcitonin is secreted from folli uh, parafollicular cell. Understood? I hope the you got the. Uh, you can compare the different location, different cell of the from from where these uh, hormones are released. And PTH it released from the uh, your th parathyroid gland from the chief cell. And okay, come to the this uh, this part. So mechanism of action is this peptide that inhibit bone osteoclast and so inhibit bone resorption and increase the renal excretion okay mm. understood so this is the uh, it will increase the bone osteoclast uh, inhibit the bone osteoclast how it will take uh, the calcium and deliver to the you know to the bone and instead of bone osteoclast in it inhibit a bone osteoblast and increase bone osteoblast so it will uh, hamper the release of uh, rank uh, this is one receptor in the osteoclast cell this is uh, in the osteoblast cell this is called rank cell uh, rank receptor so it will decrease the expression of this receptor onto the your uh, osteoblast cell so this is not important, it's quite de uh, detailed, nobody going to ask the mechanism of for that. So I've not included that rank, rank 1 and rank 2, okay, it's not required for you. But you just, uh, you must know how it do, it, 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 the calcitonin will inhibit the osteoclast and so inhibit the bone resorption. So if they do the bone resorption, so it will not release calcium and phosphorus rather than rather than that it will take the calcium from the plasma and deliver to the bone okay increase excretion secretion uh, uh, increase secretion when calcium level is increased okay so uh, when the level of the calcium is increased so this calcitonin will be in the it will come in an action what is action? It will take the uh, plasma calcium and deliver to the bone. The second thing, it will increase the excretion of the calcium from the intestine. Uh, sorry, from the kidney. Excretion from the kidney. And ultimately, the final thing, overall effect is the level of the calcium will it will decrease. So, what is the calcitonin action? These two action it doesn't have. So when the level of the calcium in the plasma is increased, then this uh, calcitonin plays in action. It, it will go to the bone, increase the bone formation, and decrease calcium and phosphorus release from the bone, and decrease calcium, uh, plasma calcium. How it does? And this is the same picture not going not wanted to go in detail of that already discussed several times so from the calcium from the gland uh, parafollicular cell of the thyroid gland calcitonin is released stimulate bone and deposit calcium in the bone reduce calcium uptake and reduce calcium reabsorption from the kidney so opposite function how it get stimulus for release of calcitonin when the level of the calcium will be high when the level of the calcium will be high calcitonin will come and maintain the calcium level in the plasma okay so homeostasis how the normal blood uh, calcium level is 10 to 10 uh, about some 10 mg per 100 ml so when the you know the blood calcium level will be fall the parathyroid hormone will come pth it will increase everything and the level is maintained and when the calcium level is high so then the calcitonin will be come in action and does all this maintain the calcium level by doing all this function so vitamin D deficiency cause 
uh, poor intake uh, how it uh, vitamin d deficiency cause uh, deficiency occurs so when a person will take a less uh, vitamin d uh, food like uh, milk decreased milk intake or paneer or any seafood or green vegetables inadequate exposure to the uv light so uh, how much how long a person should stand to, to or exposed to the uv light to uh, to get a adi adequate exposure is all around 5 to 10 minutes not more than that okay so in the darker pers person the melanin is high so this melanin will uh, you know protect from uv light so for the darker person you have it sh he should stand a little bit uh, longer time some around 10 to 15 minutes whereas uh, in the you know vitis person they must uh, 5 minutes is more than sufficient okay because they they have less melanin as compared to the darker person Okay, malabsorption syndrome, like uh, so, you know, uh, some uh, tropical screw is there, uh, decrease abs absorption from the uh, in intestine, or uh, some liver disease, it can also uh, occur, pancreatic insufficiency, it, it also occur. Uh, this is a malabsorption disease by which the absorption of the calcium will not take place when also increase metabolism like you know uh, as an on anti conversion drugs like activate uh, p450 system enzyme in the liver that increase the degradation of the vitamin d so uh, you know when the level of vitamin d is high so there is an enzyme called uh, 24 hydroxy calciferol uh, yeah, had, uh, 24 hydroxy hydro uh, hydrolase this will degrade vitamin d3 so how the how so that's how it uh, you know reg vitamin d3 is regulated and the renal disease obviously there is no reabsorption vitamin d3 records uh, type 1 there is uh, you know um, absence of 1 alpha hydroxylase which you know the vitamin d3 is not uh, vitamin d3 is there but it will not uh, convert into an active vitamin d3 which is a calcitriol and vitamin d dependent rickets type 2 which is defect in the receptor okay and certain drugs like uh, thiazide and uh, septic shock icu is known mechanism for that Let's come to the abnormality, the hypocalcemia and hypercalcemia, hypophosphatemia and hyperphosphatemia. Let's see one by one. I hope you understood by this time you understood the regulation part ve very well because I have uh, repeated multiple times for that uh, the regulation and this I think the regulation part is more important where you know in that you know the mechanism how uh, the calcium and phosphorus is regulated and by the three there is a total three hormone and from the different location they does the the same thing the function is there the calcium uh, vitamin d3 and the pth they have almost same function and the opposite function is having a calcitonin okay so uh, please read this part uh, very carefully it's very important so hypocalcemia uh, we discuss when there is a low level of uh, albumin because it is a bounded form calcium is a bounded form uh, in the bounded form will be decreased so when there will be a low level of albumin if there is some disease because uh, albumin is mainly synthesized mostly synthesized from the uh, liver if the, there is any chronic disease in the liver nephrotic syndrome already discussed in the last uh, KFT classes there is a defect in the uh, you know in the basement membrane the charge uh, the failure of the charge negative charge on the basement membrane which will uh, attract the albumin and is increase the excretion of the albumin 
okay so malnutrition this is all understood you have to take a, a high protein diet to get rid of all albumin def deformities so uh, now the other causes for hypoparathyroidism so you know the how calcium is maintained by the parathyroid if the hypoparathyroidism is there that means the decreased level of pth decreased level of pth in turns the decreased level of calcium vitamin d3 deficiency the same reason it will not absorb and all that function chronic renal failure failure uh, this this will not absorb if the failure is there the reabsorption of the you know calcium will not occur so what is what will the clinical feature for the hypocalcemia so when uh, first of importantly when it is called is it when is uh, the level of less than 8.5 mg per deciliter then we'll call it hypercalcemia so what is the clinical feature neuromuscular hyperexcitability i told you in the uh, very first slide it helps in the nerve conduction so if the level of calcium is less so it get excited is it more excited and hyper excitability will be there muscular spasm will be there <coughs> facial grimacing tetany paresthesia and in the extreme cases you know there is a laryngeal spasm uh, spasms uh, convulsions and respiratory arrest which the in that case the, this uh, hypercalcemia is very fatal <coughs> so you know, so you know how is you finding hyper uh, reflexia this is a carpopedal spas or is called a chauvinistic sign 10 to 20% what you will do uh, you will uh, uh, this you will tap to the you know facial muscle and if the you will tap with your fingers if you if the tapping will increase uh, you know uh, hyper excitability then you will see you will f feel this uh, a muscle spasm is there normal if you tap you will feel a cheeky uh, thing you know soft thing and when the patient will land up with hypercalcemia you will find a very tender or very spasmatic uh, uh, you know this uh, muscles will occur what is trozia sign trozia sign is that uh, you will take the systolic pressure of the patient suppose the systolic pressure of the patient is 140 uh, mmhg so you will uh, what you will do you know the systolic uh, so 140 is the systolic so you will increase 20 mmhg millimeter of mercury so you will keep you will increase the uh, you know with, with the apparatus you will go at 160 mmhg keep it uh, or keep the systolic pressure at 160 mmhg keep it for 3 uh, minutes in 3 minutes if the patient is uh, hypo is, is the hypocalcemia is there so you will see the hand of that patient will come and make it like a curve a little curve like this so there is a distortion of you know your in that patient of the hand if hypocalcemia is there okay now uh, these are the general symptoms abdominal distension seizures lethargy and apnea so this what i'm saying trying to say uh, when you do you will feel this uh, finger will turn in that uh, rotation and for the chauvinistic sign you have to tap here tap here this two location this is you know see this is how is tapping and this is trozia sign now uh, you will increase the blood pressure systolic 1 16 increase 20 mmg from the systolic pressure or you can do the hyper uh, flexia reflexia in the patient also a patient leg also but these two are the common practice in the we do in the clinical scenario but uh, yes there is a three sign total 
now come to the hypercalcemia the again the same causes uh, the opposite causes of the hyper hypercalcemia hyperparathyroidism the reason is this uh, malignant tumor uh, like with a uh, malignant tumor which will increase the calcium because lots of cells get this uh, you know destruction of the cell will be there turnover will be there so increase level of your calcium vitamin d intoxication if the patient is on vitamin d uh, medication if you take more medication then you will get he will make and landed with the vitamin d intoxication <coughs> and the drugs like thiazides with inhibit the excretion of the calcium immobilization so uh, you know a patient a bedridden patient they generally are the victims for this hypercalcemia so clinical features uh, sometimes is a asymptomatic or maybe a mild fatigue mal malaise weakness or uh, sometimes anorexia constipation these are the general features uh, may landed with the kidney stones and uh, you know ectopic calcification in the kidney skin blood vessels and lungs to sometimes lungs to which is very in uncommon uh, lungs so how will you treat symptomatically hypocalcemia need uh, iv calcium and continuous monitoring of arrhythmia so why we give iv so uh, so generally we give iv is called a slow infusion we cannot give a a shot of calcium we never give a shot of calcium because it can land up with a uh, arrhythmia so we what we do we just give a uh, calcium in uh, or we just say it is a slow infusion of the calcium so that the level of the calcium is maintain or increase uh, you know systematically or uh and along with that we just add a uh, you know we just we have to monitor the calcium level also every 2 hours so if, if the patient having some arrhythmia we can stop the uh, infusion so also oral calcium and vitamin d3 is we can also give vitamin active form of vitamin d is preferred we generally prefer uh, just write vitamin d3 which is a 120 uh, 125 hydroxy calcium cholecalcifol so and also we recommend a calcium dependent diet so osteopenia so you know poverty will less number of calcium in a bone so is land with osteoporosis deficient matrix normal mineralization <coughs> this is the difference osteomalacia normal matrix deficient uh, mineralization and hyperparathyroidism what will happen there will be normal matrix and mineralization increase resorption let's come to the hypophosphatemia so Uh, okay, high for first video. The level is if it is decreased 2.5 mg per deciliter. Uh, it causes hyperparathyroidism. Uh, so, sorry, it, it the cause of hyperparat uh, hypophosphatemia is hyperparathyroidism, renal tubular defects, vitamin D deficiency, and sometimes and with the antacids. Okay, and uh, intracellular shift when you give a uh, insulin. so there is a shift of cal uh, phosphate so uh, and uh, potassium so at that time we just land may land up with the uh, hypophosphatemia so these are the symptoms uh, muscle weakness acute respiratory failure decreased cardiac rhabdomyolysis uh, is also rhabdomyolysis also called a crush syndrome so where is uh, hyperphosphatemia The, the causes are decreased renal excretion for example acute renal failure renal chronic renal failure hyperparathyroidism and some vitamin in d intoxications cross injuries 
like rhabdomyolysis and the feature is tetany and seizure so you know these are the most sim uh, we have discussed all the vitamin hypo hypo hyper and hypo for both calcium and phosphorus and what is the effect of diet this is very important uh, you know we take a soft drink so don't take more soft drink because it decreases your bone uh, it, it, the loss of bone is high in, due to a soft drink uh, and increased dietary intake of calcium may prevent osteoporosis in the post menopausal women and high sodium associated with fast food consumption compete for the renal absorption of calcium and cause renal hypercalciuria so if you take a fast food what why generally we say don't take fast food you will get a renal stone this is the reason so high it has a high sodium uh, contain of uh, fast food and this will compete the renal excretion for the calcium so if the calcium is not excreted it will be in the kidney and it will cause cause the renal stone and you know leading to this uh, low level calcium and the this this stimulate pta secretion from the leading bone resorption so uh, effect of exercise so you know, normal bone function requires weight bearing exercise increase bone resorption occur during mineralization so this is the this all we have learned in the today's class so i hope you get you understood today's class and the important is uh, just let me know uh, if you have any doubt in this class so i will repeat that topic just just text me so that i can respond to you as soon as possible okay and uh, from my side today uh, this is done for today and if you have any doubt just uh, let me know and the important part for today class is the regulation of the calcium and phosphorus this from an exam point of view this is very important and i hope you understood that part very well because uh, in almost uh, 50% of the slide we have the, that's regulation so mm, thank you very much and i good luck for your exams and everything thank you okay someone has uh, asked me to repeat the formation of vitamin d3 okay okay so uh, i'll repeat that you know uh, how the vitamin d3 is formed so in the skin in the skin we have a cholesterol right so in the skin the cholesterol is in the form of dehydro cholesterol now this dehydro cholesterol in the skin when uv light fall on that it will form vitamin d vitamin d okay so uh, this will uh, this vitamin d will go to the uh, your kidney uh, sorry in the liver from the skin to the liver and in the liver it get converted into 25 hydroxy vitamin d3 and this 25 hydroxy uh, d3 is synthesized in liver now this 25 hydroxy vitamin d3 is it get it goes to the kidney and here it convert into 125 dehydroxy uh, hydroxy uh, vitamin d so this is done by an enzyme in kidney it's called one alpha hydroxylase so how this is the process so 25 hydroxy vitamin d3 is called uh, uh, vitamin d uh, or cal calcium diol and 125 hydroxy vitamin d is called cal cal calcitriol so uh, this calcitriol is the active form of vitamin d okay or you can say vitamin d3 okay should i repeat it again or is okay 
monica thakur uh, has asked this question so is, is i'm clear or you wanted me to repeat it again okay thank you thank you so much or if you have still if you have doubt just mail me uh, i'll i'll send you some videos uh, with oh, i have some videos i'll send you in that mail okay i hope you have my email id i'm writing it down also thank you very much